Hello, Keith Ruck here at VisionMachinery.org. Guys, I thought I'd share with you a new addition to the shop, and it's a little heat treating oven that I just recently picked up. And we got a little job we're gonna be using this for here today, and I thought that'd be the subject of this video. But first off, a little bit about the heat treat oven. This is a Hot Shot 360. I purchased this from Stan Zinkowski over at Barzy Industrial. Uh, Stan is uh, the guy in our little YouTube machinist community that uh, runs and, and operates the, uh, the, the summer bash that we have out in California each summer uh, where a lot of YouTube creators get together and Stan is a little bit of an entrepreneur he's got a business doing all kinds of industrial controls and and what have you and he uh, makes a little square a little machinist square uh, I've got a set of those as well uh, but one thing he does is some heat treating in his work and he actually got very uh, I guess you could say discouraged with his heat treat oven that he had and he said you know what I think I can do better than this so Stan went out and designed and has, has started making his own um, heat treat ovens and he's calling them the Hot Shot 360. The 360 stands for 360 cubic inches uh, that you can put in here. It's a little bit of a small size uh, heat treat oven for doing smaller work, uh, but I've been needing something like this in my shop for a while. I've, I've had on occasion the need to do some heat treating. I've had on occasion the need to do some annealing of metal. Uh, I've had on occasion, probably really the biggest thing that I was interested in is being able to do a heat treat to cast iron to, for stress relief purposes. I've been needing an oven to do that. Uh, I've been getting some new castings done on some various things, and now I just want to do a stress relief uh, process, which you can do through a program uh, in the oven here. So Stan has started making these things. If you're interested in one, I would encourage you to get up with him. His uh, website is barzindustrial.com, and uh, just, just ask him about it. I looked right before doing the video. I don't think he actually has these listed for sale yet, but he is taking orders on them. And I think the reason he really hasn't put them out for sale sale yet is because he's still tweaking the design. He's making improvements to it. In fact, I saw some posts just the other day where he has added some new features even since the one I've got, which I've only had for a couple of weeks now. So anyway, let me kind of zoom you in here. I'm going to show you a little bit about the oven and then we're going to show you a little bit about the job we've got at hand. So this is the oven. He's basically got this uh, made out of stainless steel, so it's not going to rust and corrode. Uh, one of the problems he had with his old oven, it was made out of just regular sheet metal, and over time as it heated up, the paint burned off of it and uh, it started rusting. Uh, with this right here, it shouldn't have a, a rust problem. Uh, but when you open it up, it's uh, very well insulated. Uh, in fact, I can heat this thing up to, I had it up to about 1500 degrees the other day. And while I wouldn't go over here and just put my hand on it, it's, it's gonna get hot enough that it would probably burn you to the touch. Uh, it's amazing at uh, how cool it's keeping that with those kind of temperatures on the inside of this. I haven't shot it with an IR thermometer or anything to see what it is, but it's, it's not generating a lot of heat off of it because it is so well insulated. Uh, a little bit about the control box here. Uh, he's got a couple of different options he's offering on this one. I've got the one that has the, con the, the controller in here that you can actually program a ramp up and ramp down cycle that has multiple ramps and so forth in it to give me a little bit more flexibility. There's also a, another version that has a very similar controller to this, but basically you just manually, you'll dial in a temperature, it'll take it there, it'll keep it there, etc. So I'm just gonna flip the power on and when you do, uh, it's going to boot up here and it's going to tell you um, the temperature, the target temperature, and I was just messing around with it. I had 233 in here, but then 80 degrees is the temperature on the inside of this. And uh, you can bump it up. For the job I've got coming up, I want to go to 1450 degrees, so I'm going to just go ahead and, and run this up to 1450 right now. All right, so 1450 is my target temperature, 80 degrees is uh, where it is right now. When I get ready to start this, I'll just hit the heat enable button. And uh, again, those coils that are inside here will start heating up red hot and start heating up in there. Uh, I've ran this oven twice now. The first time was just a cure out process. When you get it, you need to kind of cure it because all the insulation in there, it, it needs to off gas and it burns all the impurities and such out of it uh, after that. Uh, it's not too bad to run as far as smell or anything, but, uh, I, and I have used it for one job so far, and it was actually where I programmed a control in here, and I was doing a stress relief on some cast iron on that one. This one's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just basically going to run it in manual mode. 
Uh, a little bit more about the control panel here. He's got a cooling fan inside of here to help keep this cool. Uh, there's an alarm on the front, and that is in your program mode. You can actually program alarms, so you can program it when it gets to whenever it gets to a certain temperature or something, where you'll get an audible alarm. Uh, it's completely optional how you do that. Um, he's got this thing very well designed. Uh, compared to the commercial one that he had bought before, this thing is so much over-engineered. It's not even funny. Uh, and he's got some videos up on his YouTube channel talking about it. But that's enough about the oven right now. I'm not going to give you a price because I know that the, that's somewhat in flux right now as he's making improvements to these and so forth. So if you're interested in one, uh, go to Barzy Industrial. Contact Stan Zinkowski and he can uh, give you, tell you about a price, tell you when they're going to be making another batch of these. And again, they're improving, making improvements to these, uh, hopefully to have them on the market soon. So let me show you a little bit about the job we're going to be doing next. So what we're going to be working on today is I'm actually going to be doing a heat treat on this to temper or actually to harden and then temper this uh, tool. And this is actually a piece that was made by one of my viewers, uh, Kurt Sirens, who's up in Michigan. He had a project where he is needing to make a worm gear uh, for something that he's working on. And he was not able to find a stock worm gear. And to make a worm gear, you need a gear hob. And that's basically what he made was a gear hob. And basically all this is, is you, you cut this thing out. You do it just kind of like you're threading something. You make it solid and you do it like you put the pitch in there just like you're threading. You cut your tool though, instead of being like for threading it, you, you make that the pitch that you need for that gear. And then after you do that, you go in and you mill out these slots on a dividing head uh, to give you your cutting and your relief or what have you. So he made this tool, and, uh, but it's not hard. Obviously, he bought a piece of metal, a uh, piece of tool steel, and now it needs to be actually go through the heat treat to actually make it hard. Right now, it was in the soft state for machining purposes. Now, this piece of metal is W1. Uh, and if people in the metal business will know that that is a water hardening um, material. And uh, Kurt said, you're probably gonna get a bunch of people telling you that, oh, I used the wrong material. You should have used something like O1, which is an oil hardening uh, material or something like that. But uh, he chose to use the W1. He's used it before. He's, he's comfortable with machining it and uh, so forth. So uh, I did not have any, any, any say so in the material that was used for this. So uh, anyway, what we got is what we got. And for what he's going to use it for, I think it'll be fine. This tool is going to get basically get used one time uh, to make one worm, worm gear. And uh, that'll probably be all that ever gets used. So I think that the job we're going to do here is going to be perfectly fine. So Kurt sent along everything I need to do the job. He sent along specific instructions on how to do it. So he sent along a little uh, stainless steel pan that he made. And he also sent along some boric acid. This boric acid, we're going to basically put a layer down here in the bottom. We'll put the tool in here and completely cover the tool in the boric acid. That's going to protect the, the tool and kind of prevent it from oxidizing uh, while we're doing this, this heat treat. And once we get it in there, we're going to heat the oven up raise it up to 1450 degrees. Once we get it to 1450 degrees, I'm gonna let it soak for 30 minutes at that temperature. Then we take it out and we're gonna quench it in brine, uh, which is basically a water and salt mixture. The brine is gonna boil at a little bit higher temperature than regular water. And uh, that's the ideal temperature for this W1 drill rod. Once we quench it, uh, we're going to put it back in the oven, but at a lower temperature, we're going to drop the temperature down the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll soak it for two hours at that, and that will actually temper it to get the, the hardness exactly where you want it, and then we'll just let it air cool to room temperature after that. So that's our plan. So let's go ahead. We're going to get our tool ready here. I'm going to get my boric acid out, and we'll prep this for the job. And we're going to put a layer down in the bottom like such. We'll carefully place our tool in here. I don't want it touching the bottom of that metal pan. And now we'll cover it up the rest of the way with the boric acid. I probably should be wearing gloves for this, but I'm not. So guys, we're gonna get ready to start our heat treat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my part in here. Again, it's in the boric acid. 
set it inside the door. I'm also just going to put a piece of metal in here. And uh, the idea here is I just want to, I'm going to heat that up as well. And what we're going to use that for is to preheat our water. So we will quench that first just to get our, our quench water up to temperature, uh, up to a, a warmer temperature rather than just putting in, in ice cold water. And then we'll quench our part in that already preheated water. So we are ready to go. I got my oven at 1450 degrees. I'm going to hit my heat enable button and you can start watching the temperature rise here as those coils uh, start heating up in there and it will rise up to temperature pretty quickly. I'm just going to keep an eye on this. I could have programmed a cycle where it went to 1450, held it there for 30 minutes and then gave me an alarm. Uh, but I'm doing this the lazy way. I'm just going to keep an eye on it when I get to 1450 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit, I will set, I will send an alarm on my phone for 30 minutes, let it soak, and then we'll do the quench. So we'll let this uh, go ahead and run up to temp. Well, the oven's been running now for probably about 20 minutes, and we're getting right up on that 1450 degree, 1448 here. Uh, I noticed it was climbing real fast until it got to about 1430, and then it started kind of cycling uh, the heat elements in there so that it's not just going to blow past this number. So uh, it should keep that temperature right there around 1450. Uh, but as soon as we get there, all right, 1450, I'm going to start a timer on my phone here for about uh, uh, 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll do the quench. So anyway, uh, we're hovering right there around 1450 right now. So while we're waiting on our temperature to get there, I'm going to start making our brine solution. And I'm just using some regular table salt. Uh, I think he said he wanted about a 9% brine. I'll, I'll check my calculations in a minute, but I've got about three gallons of water in here and I've figured out that we need about two and a quarter pounds of salt in those three gallons of water to get to the solution that he calculated. So anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and pour this in and stir it up and uh, I'll make sure we keep just stirring this to keep it in solution until we uh, get ready to do our quench. Again, the reason we're putting the salt in here is the salt water is gonna boil at a higher temperature than regular water. Depending on the amount of salt that you have in there, it's, uh, the temperature is gonna be varying. I don't know what the math is. I haven't calculated it, uh, but this is gonna make sure that we get that quench temperature at the right volume or right temperature for this particular grade of metal. All right, that's about two and a quarter pounds of salt. And we'll make sure this is mixed up really well. So we've been cooking our metal over here now for the last uh, 30 minutes or so. We've been at that 1450 degrees and uh, we should be ready to do our quench now. So anyway, I've got on a long sleeve shirt. I'm gonna put on some welding gloves here just to help protect me. Uh, I got me a big pair of channel lock pliers I'm going to use to grab a hold of my part and I got my water down here my brine uh, for this to soak in and ideally this should probably be in a metal bucket but I don't have a metal bucket handy so I'm just going to use a plastic bucket and I'm going to make sure that I hopefully keep it off of that and we don't have a big mess in here if I drop that red hot part down the bottom it may burn a hole in that bucket and then we'll have a mess to clean up in the shop but hopefully we won't have to deal with that. So anyway, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I've got in the oven. Uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and open the door and you can take a peek in there and see the red hot. We're gonna start with the, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that back up right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with that just plain piece of metal and uh, that will preheat my water, get it up to temperature. We'll shut the door, come back over, grab the hob. We will do our quench on that. And then I'm gonna leave the door open the second time. I'll turn my heat off, I'll leave the door open, and we will uh, let the temperature drop back down to 400 degrees. I'll reset my temperature on here, and we'll do our actual heat treat at 400 degrees at two hours. So let's go here, go ahead and put my gloves on. Uh, I am gonna wear a face shield just in case anything tries to splash back up in my face. Uh, I don't get hit with anything. Turn off my heat enable so there's no power in there.
grab this part go ahead and pull it out and we'll do our quench he said to do the quench very fast so I'm moving it around in the water and again this is going to basically just heat preheat that water for me so when I do the actual part it won't it'll, the water will be at a little bit higher temperature which will be more ideal for this part that we're doing I want to move it around uh, the water will actually if you just stick it straight down in there the water will boil right there around the part and uh, not come in contact with it so it's starting to I'm starting to hear it stop sizzling which tells me that I've got the temperature down and We'll just let that cool right there. Turn my heat enable back off again. And tell you what I'm gonna do. Hang on a second. I'm gonna pull this tray out of here and set it over there on that uh, brick. This is a fire brick, and that's just gonna hopefully allow me to grab a hold of it a little bit better. So now I'm gonna come in here grab the actual part with the pliers so it's been two hours we've been soaking this thing at 400 degrees so we are ready to pull her out and I'm gonna turn off my heat and we will set her over here and let her air cool. I'm just gonna put it on this little fire brick so it doesn't pull any heat out of the, the table here. And uh, like I said, we're just gonna leave it there, let it cool down. I'm gonna Power wheel. I'm gonna let that fan cool down a minute, but uh, once that fan quits running, I'm gonna shut this thing off and I will let it cool down overnight. And tomorrow, this ought to be all ready to pack up and send on back. Well, there you go. That's gonna be a wrap on this. I'm gonna let this cool down and I'll get it packed up tomorrow and send it on back up to Kurt where hopefully he can uh, put this to work and use it to make a new worm gear. Uh, this is the second job that I've run on the Hotshot 360, and so far it is working great. Uh, I've been very impressed with this. If you're interested in one, go check it out at uh, Barzy Industrial. Get a hold of the Stan Zinkowski over there and uh, see if he can hook you up on one of these little heat treat ovens. It's a great little addition to my shop, and uh, I can see all kinds of uses uh, for it. Uh, here in the near future, I've got several jobs that we're going to be able to use this on. So that's going to be all, folks. Uh, thanks, as always, for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up are always appreciated, and leave me some comments if you like. We'll talk to you next time around. Thanks for watching.